This is quite shocking. I think South Africa has lost it at this point. So the white South Africans are now demanding for their own country inside South Africa. I mean, I never expected this, but at this point, uh, South Africans, oh, I don't even know what to say. Now, I want you to listen to this. Because what we're looking to create in, in, in the Western Cape is an ideological homeland for people who think like us, people who have broadly Western values, who want to live in the first world uh, and, and you know, want to, to and, and I've often used the example, the Western Cape uh, becomes almost like uh, 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 Israel for the Jews, if I can use that example. Come on, you know, you come on. Did you just listen to that? Did you just listen to that? Cape Independence. Keep independent. This one is not even Orania because I can remember Orania, there is a town in South Africa where black is not allowed. And now we have Cape independent. That means it's different. That means it's going to be like three countries inside one. You are saying that you guys don't have the same understanding. You guys don't have the same culture. You guys, you are in someone's like, God, goodness, let me know. <laughs> you carry yourself to the to South Africa and you are now saying that you guys don't have don't have the same culture how are you going to have the same culture how are you going to have the same culture it is South Africa you are not originally from the place but now you are demanding for them to have the same culture with you otherwise you will separate or divide the country man South Africa <laughs> I don't know, but I will leave you guys to this because at this point, I've given up. They want an exclusive area for white people. That's why they call for an independent Western Cape. I don't know why they can't take their bags and go to Orania or go to any place where it's exclusively white. There will never be an independent Western Cape. Western Cape is South Africa, and South Africa is Western Cape, and it will never be a colony again. Not when we are still alive. Even when we are dead, those who come after us should know that this province belongs to South Africa, and it will never be independent from South Africa. The biggest obstacle to Cape independence is not the ANC, and it's not the EFF. The biggest single obstacle to Cape independence is the DA. Unlike many other countries around the world, the Western Cape does not need South Africa's permission to call a referendum on Cape independence. Instead, the Constitution empowers the Western Cape Premier, and only the Western Cape Premier, to call one. The DA can deliver Cape independence, but is choosing not to. But it's time that we have this conversation. This is a conversation that's already taking place at dinner tables, brides, school functions, in bars, and at pretty much every other meeting place in the Western Cape. And it's now time for us to have this conversation in public. Even without the howls of racism, provincial migration is a difficult conversation because different groups of people have different legitimate rights, and sometimes those rights come into conflict with each other. The character of the Western Cape is changing, and it's changing illegally. The rights of the Western Cape people are literally being trampled on, and rather than preventing this abuse, the national government is all but encouraging it. Why? Because South Africa isn't a country which actually believes in non-racialism. So instead, it is a country which believes in African nationalism. The majority of South Africans believe that South Africa belongs to Africans, and by this, they mean black Africans. Other races are at best tolerated and at worst are subject to the relentless racial abuse, which very few are willing to call out as the racism which it truly is. Hi, John. Uh, my question is about Cape independence. Uh, can it even happen? And do you think it's a good thing? Well, thanks very much for the question, Mark. Um, I just don't think it's a realistic prospect uh, at this stage. And I look where the low-hanging fruit lies for us as, uh, as a party in the Western Cape, and that is through devolution. 
uh, you can talk about independence all you like. Uh, Scotland's been talking about it for over 100 years. Uh, Catalonia has been talking about it for just as long. Quebec and Canada has been talking about it for just as long. And we can have those existential debates and, and, and say, well, it's, independence is better than this or, or the next thing. The reality is, and the real politic is, is that the low-hanging fruit lies with devolution. It is within our reach. It's already constitutionally prescribed. And I believe that's where our efforts, energy, and focus should be. And I think we can have some quick wins with that. And that is why our focus is on that. And that is what the Western Cape Powers Bill is, is seeking to do. It's seeking to entrench the powers and channels that already exist in the Constitution to give provinces more power. Um, I don't believe in factions and fractions. I believe in uniting and leading the whole. And I want to rescue the whole of South Africa because I fundamentally believe that we are better together and that our country can reach new heights and we can do it, but we can only do it with a new government at a national level. And we can all... Who, to be honest, I don't really understand, but at least they have somebody like Malema who keep warning them, who keep warning them. I love Malema so much. Malema has proven many, many times that he is a passionate Pan-Africanist. And if you have come across his speech, you understand what I'm saying, right? And even though he lost election during the last election in South Africa, that did not change his perspective. He keep on hammering them. He keep on saying the right thing and telling them what, are the, what South Africans are going to face if they don't take their culture and their people into consideration. Because like what I'm seeing right now, upon all this evidence, it's obvious they want to have the land. They want to just take over the land. That's just the truth. You can see it. And we, we Africans keep on telling South Africans, they, they are there chasing Africans out of their country, but they are doing nothing. They are just relaxing when it comes to the white. I don't even understand that. I don't understand it. Honestly, I don't understand what the altitude is all about. But we just hope they change. I have a lot of South African friends who also speak against this. And I just wish and pray that more people will come out to speak against the, this imperialism because this is totally unacceptable. In a land that you are not originally from and you, you want to belong there, you want to have the land, that's an ancestral land of the people. You can't have a country in an ancestral land. It's not, I don't know whatever they are, the constitution says, but that's, that's for them. But me, currently, you can't just go to a United States and say that as an African, you also have your own country. Do you have, can have a community, something like Orania. Orania is okay. It's a community. It's not a country, right? But having a country in order to determine what should happen or to have, you know, when they have, one thing you have to know is that if these people succeed in getting their country, they're going to have allies. And once they have allies, they will now be a soft target to other African countries. They will now be a soft target to other African countries, like in terms of having, when maybe South Africa is not, uh, is, it will, will not like Israel, these people, will, they would like, like Israel as a country. That means they will, <laughs> they, them and our, uh, South Africans are, will be now be enemy. It will bring more problems in Africa. So South Africa, you guys should wake up. You guys should wake up and do better. You are the only one there. Nothing's going to happen. You are the only one to solve your problem. You are the only one to demand for your right and the betterment of for every South Africans. You understand? This is what I encourage every African to do. Wherever you are, speak for yourself because nothing is going to change unless you demand better leadership. Nothing is going to change. You just got to stand up and demand for it. You can't cope with problems. You can't cope with it. You can't cope with injustice. It's not the injustice are meant to be solved. You understand? Injustice, you got to solve it so that the future generation will have at least a good mental head to talk about. A, a good like have a good sense of their country. Not always trying to be second class citizen in their own country. It doesn't that's oh that's I don't know, but I would love to hear what you think in the comment section. All right? Now, see you in the next video. Peace. Don't forget to share to your family and friends.